Here is a 555 timer configured as an A-stable multivibrator making an LED flash. Here is the same 555 timer making three LEDs flash. Two are visible and the third one is inside the optocoupler. The PC817 is a very low cost optocoupler but if the application only calls for slow switching speeds it does the job. So what happens at higher switching speeds? Swapping out the capacitor for a lower capacitance one increasing the oscillator frequency. The PC817 can barely keep up as the comparatively slow rise and fall times reveal. A few years ago, when Imsai Guy demonstrated the use of a PC817 optocoupler, a commenter suggested the slow performance was due to the Miller effect and that adding a transistor in series with the photodiode to form a cascode amplifier could improve the switching speed. Imsai Guy confirmed this in a subsequent video. Here I've added the cascode transistor to reproduce the same speed up experiment. This potentiometer adjusts the bias voltage on the base pin. But as you can see the improvement in rise and fall times works only up to a point. I chose the oscillator frequency to be slightly faster than the specs for MIDI which is 31.25 kiloboard with a rise and fall time of 2 microseconds. So I don't think this speed improvement will be fast enough. Imsai Guy referenced an article that cited a discussion in a 1978 publication called Electronics on why cascode optocouplers were not used. These vintage issues of the electronics publication have been scanned, archived and are available for download by anyone with access to the internet. So I've managed to track down the original question and answer that had been cited. In the 2nd of March 1978 issue, the cascode configuration was posed as a possible solution to countering the Miller effect that limits the switching speed of the phototransistor inside optocouplers. This was followed up in the 27th of April 1978 issue where John Carroll of Dynamics Measurement Corp says it was tried and found wanting. Poor photon collection and a high beta transistor gave response times in the tens of microseconds. I haven't observed as bad as that with the PC817 but we are comparing with the state of the art in semiconductor performance back in 1978. The reason stated for why we shouldn't expect much better from the cascode optocoupler configuration are still relevant. So do I have to buy an optocoupler that is recommended for MIDI circuits such as the 6N138? I already have so many of these cheap PC817 optocouplers it would be a shame if they couldn't be used in faster switching applications. If we take a closer look at the 6N138, you'll notice it contains NPN transistors for amplifying the current from the photodiode. We could try adding such a transistor externally. And this is the circuit I came up with. The rise and fall times are far superior to anything I could get tuning the cascode amplifier configuration. I tested this circuit with actual MIDI data. An Arduino Nano clone board generates a simple MIDI note test sequence for passing to the optocoupler. The output stage is buffered using an LM358 op-amp before being sent to the MIDI in port of this Korg NTS1. The Arduino board and NTS1 are electrically isolated from each other using the PC817 optocoupler, but all the MIDI signals seem to be getting through. So, cheap slow optocouplers might still be useful for electronic music applications.